Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. We have to understand the quality of life that God has given us. See, it's not just a yeah, I'm breathing, so that means I'm alive. The life that God has given us is comes from a word Zoe, which means life as God has it. That's the kind of life that's in you. When you're born again, you receive the God kind of life. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, that is, separate you from profane things, make you pure and holy, consecrated to God. Everybody say, holy. Holy. Now that's not H-O-L-Y, it's W-H-O-L-L-Y. Make you wholly consecrated to God and may your spirit and your soul and your body, your spirit, your soul and your body be preserved, sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Now, you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. Like one of the functions of your spirit is your conscience. Your spirit is where you receive revelation, it's where you hear from God. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, all very important parts of our being. And then there's your body, the house that you walk around in. And all of those are important to God. I think too often we think he's only interested in our spirit and the spiritual parts of our lives and the so-called spiritual activities that we engage in. But actually, God is interested in and concerned about every area of your life. There's nothing about you that God's not interested in. I said there's nothing about you that God's not interested in. He's interested in everything that concerns you, every single thing. And he wants all of you, every bit of you, to be whole and healthy. Because really, to be honest, we can have one part of us that's doing okay and two or three other areas that are all messed up and we're still not going to enjoy life. Amen? I mean, you can say, you can feel good physically, but if you're still hurting and wounded from things that happened to you in your childhood and you're angry all the time, then you still don't have much of a life. Now, We can be sound spiritually. Maybe we're born again and we're on our way to heaven. But God wants more for you than that. I'm going to say something that's kind of shocking. I don't think that Jesus came just to get us to heaven. <laughs> I don't think that's all he came for. Now, I mean, that I guess is the most important part, but he wants us to enjoy the journey. He said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Now, I was in church for a long, long time before I learned anything other than just the spiritual part of life. I learned all the church doctrine. I took instructions in the church. I... I was born again, I had received Christ as my Savior, I prayed for my sins to be forgiven, I knew I was going to go to heaven, but every other part of me was a mess. I looked on the outside like maybe I had it all together, but there was a lot of stuff going on inside that nobody knew about. And the sad thing I think was that 
I don't remember in those years ever hearing a message about my thoughts. I don't remember ever hearing a message about my emotions. How many of you can bear witness of that? You, you went to church for a long, long time maybe, and you never heard any of the things that were gonna help you in your practical everyday life. You loved God, but you didn't love your life. <laughs> and I just wanna be very clear tonight for those of you here and those who watch this by TV that Jesus came to make us whole, complete. He cares about every area of our body. He cares about how you think. He cares about how you talk. He cares about your finances. He cares about your social life. He wants everything in your life to be good. And I'm going to encourage you not to settle for half a package or a quarter of a package. I'm glad if you're born again and you're, you're on your way to heaven, but I really want you to enjoy the journey. That's part of what I believe the call on my life is. Yes, I love to see people born again. We have lots of people born again. But I really like to help the Christian who is born again but is still miserable. <laughs> because it's one thing to be a miserable sinner. It's another thing entirely to be a miserable saint. Amen. <laughs> so, Jesus came to make us whole. Luke 19, 10 says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. And I like that it doesn't just say he came to seek and to save those who were lost, but that which was lost. Not just the lost person, but he wants to restore us to the original plan that God had for man in the garden before he got himself in trouble by doing what God told him not to do. Now, couple of scriptures in Psalm that I love. They're both in the same chapter and they're only three verses apart, but I think they go together. Psalm 63, 5, the psalmist David said, my whole being shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. But I want us just to focus on that first sentence. My whole being shall be satisfied. Wow. I wonder how many Christians can say that. <laughs> My whole being is satisfied. I'm satisfied, content. But if you look at three verses down at Psalm 63, 8, he says, My whole being follows hard after you. So, you see, I think that if we want our whole being to be fully satisfied, then our whole being has to follow hard after Jesus. Yeah. See, they go together. I don't mean this to sound wrong. I'm not talking about getting into works of the flesh, but I think in any area of life, what you get out of it is what you put into it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And see, it, it's... It's foolish to think that you're going to have a great, intimate, close walk with God and never spend any time with him. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's just silly to think that everything is just going to work out awesome for you if the only time you ever talk to God is when you're in trouble. <laughs> but see, if he's number one in your life, and you're ready to dedicate all of yourself to him, which we're going to talk about here in just a minute, then you'll come to the point where you can say, my whole being is satisfied and my whole being follows hard after you. You know what? Being a Christian, I mean a really victorious Christian, is not a Sunday morning event. You know, there's no better place for us to be tonight than right here. Amen. I mean, I just love the atmosphere when we get together, the praise, the worship. I mean, you, you got entertainment right here. You know, we'll laugh, we may cry, we sang, we danced. I mean, why go out to a nightclub?
And I mean, certainly there are other things to do besides just going to meetings and going to church, but you know, I commend you for taking a Thursday night. In case you're confused, this isn't Sunday morning. This is Thursday night. And I think they told me there's between six and 7,000 people here on Thursday night. And to be honest, I don't do anything fancy. I teach the Word. And so you came because you love the Word and you love to worship. And I'm going to tell you something. That's going to bring great dividends in your life. Amen. Romans 12, 1. Paul, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, in view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies. <laughs> I'll go slow. <laughs> Presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice. All your members and faculties, your mind, your will, your emotions, your feet, your hands, your eyes, as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God. And then he throws this in, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. So God's saying, oh, and by the way, I'm not asking too much. <laughs> this is like pretty normal Christianity 101. Dedicate your entire being to God. Sometimes in the morning when I'm walking, I get up, I spend time with God, and then I walk and I like to pray while I walk and make, confess the word and you know, whatever else comes to mind. And sometimes I'll say, God, I dedicate myself to you today and I kind of go through the list. I give you my mouth, I give you my mind, I give you my hands, I give you my feet, I give you my eyes. I don't want to look at anything you don't want me to look at. I don't want to say what you don't want me to say. Now, am I 100% successful all day? No. But my heart's to get there. And see, that's what God loves. He loves a person who has a heart that is passionate after him and who says, I am not going to quit and give up and just be kind of a half-baked, lukewarm Christian. I'm going to pursue you with my whole heart. And I'll tell you the truth. If Jesus came tomorrow and you had not arrived at that place of perfection, he would not be the least bit disappointed in you because what he's pleased about is that you're pressing toward that place. Yeah. Amen? And so I'm proud of you that you're here tonight because that tells me that you are serious. Some of you took off work, you traveled. Some of you will get to be here the entire weekend. And I'll tell you, that pays great benefits. So I'm just gonna ask you, are you ready? And there's no point in saying yes if you don't mean it. Are you ready to open your entire life to Jesus? I mean, are you really ready to get in and put everything out before him and say, okay, Lord, if there's anything I'm doing that you don't like, <laughs> oh yeah, we're going there. <laughs> if there's anything I'm doing that you don't like, if you'll show me and help me, I'll be witty, willing to Sacrifice it to have more of you Amen. in my life. You see, God never takes, asks us to give up anything if he doesn't intend to replace it with more of himself. Amen. And the things that we cling to are the things that make us miserable. We think it's what we need, but it's like a mirage. 
It's like that person out in the desert who thinks they see water, and when they get there, it's not water at all. You know, we see these things, oh, I gotta have that. Oh, I gotta, oh man, I gotta have that. And then we wonder why we still stay miserable. I appeal to you to make a decisive dedication. So it's a decision, it's a dedication, and bring yourself as a living sacrifice. Yes, the word sacrifice is in the Bible. As a living sacrifice. He doesn't want dead sacrifices anymore. He had those under the old covenant. Now he wants living sacrifices. People that are going to get out in the world and show people what it's really like to have an intimate relationship with God through Christ and what it's really like to be full of the life of God. Okay, so you want to go there with me, right? All right. Now, we're going to break this up into four segments this weekend. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about being spiritually healthy. Because if your spirit is not right, none of the rest of you is ever going to get right. And then throughout the weekend, I'm going to talk about your body. I'm not going to tell you what meeting I'm going to do these in, because if I do, you'll decide that you don't want some of them. Because <laughs> I'm going to really just kind of mess around in stuff that's probably none of my business, but we're going to go there anyway, like <laughs> eating and sleeping and And we're just going to cover everything this weekend. Because you see, God wants us to dedicate all of it. I said he wants us to dedicate all of it. Not just some part, but all of it. So to be spiritually healthy, obviously the first thing we need is to receive Christ as our Savior. That's the beginning. And so what does it mean to be born again. Well, you're born again inside. Your spirit is made new. God comes to live in your spirit and you become the home of God. Now that to me is just an amazing thing. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the body. God lives in you as a believer. But I'm particularly fond of 1 John 3, 9. And so we're going to share that in talking about the new birth. No one born of God or born again deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. Now, it doesn't say he never sins. But it says you don't habitually, knowingly, purposely live a lifestyle of sin. You can't do that anymore if you're truly born again. And if somebody says to you that they're a Christian and they're doing that, then something's wrong. Because you get a new nature. God's nature comes to dwell in you. You get a new heart. And so you just cannot keep doing all the things that everybody in the world does can't keep doing all kinds of ungodly things because, and it's not even because it's wrong and God doesn't want you to do it. You just can't do it because it's not your nature to keep doing it anymore. And so you, you can't be happy with it. Now, I'm not saying that you never sin. Of course you sin. And there may be things that are bondages in our lives that it takes us a while to get free from and you know, we make allowances for all those things, but I'm just saying that if you're really born again, then you can't just live in sin and just be happy with it. You just can't. I mean, if you thought you were miserable in your sin before you were born again, you just get God living on the inside of you and keep it up and see how miserable you can get. <laughs> Amen? 
You can, he cannot continue to live that kind of life because God's nature abides in him. Now, I love the way the Amplified Bible puts this. His principle of life, the divine sperm, remains permanently within him, <laughs> and he cannot practice sinning because he is born or begotten of God. Now, now what's this divine sperm thing? Now, we all know that when a woman gets pregnant, the sperm of her husband is planted in her womb, and she becomes pregnant with a child. Now, I'm real fond of this because this is putting it about as plain as it can be. Jesus, as far as looking at this, would be the Son of God, the divine sperm of God. When you're born again, he comes to live in you. He's planted in the womb of your spirit. And I love to say it this way. I'm not trying to be cute or weird or anything else, but I think when you're born again, you become pregnant, so to speak, with everything that God is. He's in you. Joy is in you. Peace is in you. Righteousness is in you. Holiness is in you. You are just, so, you are so full of good things. You are amazing. And many of you don't even know it yet. You don't even know how amazing you are. The anointing is in you. The presence of God is in you. Power is in you. I mean, you got what it takes to live an amazing life and to do amazing things. But the devil doesn't want you to know it. So see, no matter what you have, and I'm telling you, you got it. If you're born again, you got it. I got a little song that I teach people. I got it, I got it, I really, really got it, I got it, I got it. I'm not much of a singer, but there you have it. You let that jingle get in your head and you'll walk around singing that, I got it, I got it, I really, really got it. And that's better than looking for it all your life. See, that doesn't even work. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. <laughs> I'm really, really looking for it. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. I mean, that just wears me out even trying to sing it. But when I say, I got it. I got it. I really, really got it. And see, you, you got it. God is abiding in you. And so when he comes, everything he is comes. But just like when a woman gets pregnant, she gets all excited, just like a born again, oh, ah. and, but when she's first pregnant, one of the things that people say is, well, you sure don't look pregnant. Well, that's what people say to us a lot of times when we first start serving God, well, you, you don't look any different, you, don't, you haven't changed. You're no different. But see, God sees the end from the beginning. And everything that he does comes as a seed Come on. And as you water it with the word, I want this just gets so exciting. As you water it with the word and the sun shines on you. <laughs> yeah, you got it. And then pretty soon, you know what people say? I see it. I see it. I really, really see it. <laughs> And that's what we want. We don't want to just know we've got it, but nobody else believe we've got it. We want people to see God working through us. And that comes from doing just what you're doing here tonight. That comes from spending time in the Word, spending time worshiping God, spending time just in an anointed atmosphere and trusting that God is working in you and changing you from glory to glory. Amen. Give God a big shout. Now, I think that obedience, which is what we have to talk about, right? <laughs> We're going to have to go there. We can't understand this if we don't. 
You know, everything was good for Adam and Eve in the garden before they disobeyed God. And God's trying to get us back to where they were before everything got messed up. And God breathed into Adam the breath of life. But it was, we have to understand the quality of life that God has given us. See, it's not just a, yeah, I'm breathing, so that means I'm alive. The life that God has given us is, comes from a word zoe, which means life as God has it. That's the kind of life that's in you. When you're born again, you receive the God kind of life on the inside of you. And honey, that'll put a smile on your face. I don't care how many problems you've got if you learn to focus on the right thing. Our spiritual health is determined by how much time we spend with God, our level of obedience to His Word, and how well we follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. They know what abuse is. They know what trauma is. They know what it is to struggle with identity. They know what it is to face conflict in their lives. They know what it is to struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness. And Joyce's story and her experience is so particularly relevant to them because they understand that, hey, this lady knows my context. I, I, I might not be able to speak her language. I might not be able to understand her country or her, her culture. But she knows my language of pain and abuse and hurt. And her testimony in their lives gives them hope for their own lives. If, if it can happen for that lady, it could happen for me. Being committed. Being committed is very important. Mobile phones being used by almost everyone on the continent. In fact, there are more mobile phones on the continent of Africa than there are people at the moment. Uh, so this is a really exciting platform, and people are accessing the internet. Well over 85% of people uh, through their mobile phones first. So we've got several pages recently that have been opened up in Nigeria, uh, several that have been opened up in Ethiopia, several in uh, uh, Kenya as well, and we're getting exciting responses from that. So it's one way that we can communicate directly to people uh, on a regular basis, but at the same time where there are physical needs, we respond particularly to those through feeding programs and water wells and anti-human trafficking wells work and skills development programs for young girls that prevent them from being sold into child marriage and secure their education for the rest of high school. I think for me, the thing that really touches my heart is in the midst of all the numbers, because we do, we work with some uh, crazy numbers and I think we get blown away uh, listening to some of the reach of people. Um, I mean, you know, the millions and the thousands and the hundreds of thousands, those figures that come back. Uh, what always catches me off guard a little bit and gets me uh, overwhelmed is when you have those one-on-one -on -one encounters with people. And each and every one of them has a unique story. Each and every one of them uh, has a unique uh, set of challenges that they've got to overcome, a unique set of pain. Uh, but God's particular love for each individual in each country, in each culture, in each language is what blows me away.
And so I'm inviting you to join us in partnership. Help us glorify God and share Christ. Help us help hurting people. Help us feed the poor and get the gospel to people that don't yet know what we know. You can check us out on JoyceMeyer.org and find out all that you need to know about partnership or you can call the ministry. God bless you and thank you for praying about this. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl shop. Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse inspiratie? Inspirerende gedachten levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan. 